Okay, now we looked at some of them. Now let's actually do it. Um, maybe I'll switch back and forth into different modes. Here's a command prompt. That's how I like to use last tools. So I go to the binary directory. But yeah, let's start with last. Let's, let's start with the let's start with the GUIs. So you can run start the GUI also from the command line. And um, I'm browsing now to an area too. That's a forested area. And every tool actually is a viewer. In every tool, you have the option to view. So I'm just viewing it real quick to see what kind of LiDAR data I have here. This is now unclassified LiDAR data from a forested area. Yeah, clearly forested. Um, we can do, uh, we can look at the points real quick. Now can, we could walk through the forest now like this. And you could change the, 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 the way you color the points. And now you see we have a lot more. If I now look at the first and the last, first and the last points. And uh, if I, you see a lot more intermediate points, a lot more green ones. And uh, then there's a flight line mode. So now you see the points colored by flight line because this tile is composed of multiple flight lines. And you can look at different flight lines but with zero, one, two, three. There's, a, there's an option here, render only flight lines. And you see in, in, in brackets again, there's a hotkey for the keyboard. So you can, uh, you know, just switching back for between two flight lines. If we look at uh, all the points again, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So five different flight lines are in here. One barely touches the corner. But they are not classified. If I say color by classification, and I say all points, all I get is black. So first step, classify the points. How do we do this with last tools? It's really easy. Uh, so it's already loaded. We have one file. And now we just go through this, these few options here. And this is a very wilderness area. Nature or wilderness, both would work fine. What this exactly means is a bit too far, much to explain uh, for this little time we have today. The readme file, which you get by just clicking here, the readme file explains all these things. Uh, and then you can set some other parameters, same thing here. Yeah, and. Um, you can say what format you want for output, and you can specify, and I really like using this, you can specify an output appendix. And what this will do, it will just add D G to the end of the file name, and then you don't have to type in an output file name. It'll just use the input file name and add a G at the end, like, like ground classified. And if you say run, then you can now sanity check your command line. And um, so I'm running last ground. You always know which tool you run. You just look at the top of, of, your, of your GUI. It always tells you which tool you're running. Uh, this is the input. I'm running it in wilderness mode using fine pre-processing. I'm adding a G ODIX, minus ODIX, like output appendix, to the command line. And I'm storing it in a compressed format. I, I briefly talked about the compression yesterday. And then you say start, and there's a black window where it will output what it is doing as it is processing. So it just said uh, it, it is reading 3.5 million points. Um, 
these are the parameters we chose, you know, the, the wilderness um, parameter that translated into a step size of three meters. Um, you see here this license warning. Uh, this is a full version of uh, Last Tools, uh, but this will also work with the version that you can download. There will be some restrictions, and the restrictions, uh, the tool will tell you about the restrictions in the, in the command line, uh, but it, it will work. Uh, so if you want to evaluate Last Tools, um, or if you do it for research or hobby or whatever, uh, you don't actually need a license. It, it just works. And now we're done, so we can switch back. How do I know we're done? I don't have a progress bar, and a lot of people want a progress bar, but you know, uh, you know when you're done, when, you, when these menus become uh, <laughs> reactive again. <laughs> it's very difficult to add a progress bar right now. Um, and it's it's a, not a very exciting thing to program. Um, so we're done with getting the ground points. So the next thing we could do is generate a a DTM. So for this, the tool would be last to them. I need to switch the magnifier. Sometimes it makes my life more difficult because I don't see my entire screen. Last to them. There's also a tool called blast to them. That's the same as last to them, but blast to them can handle up to two billion points as input, as one input file. And uh, Especially if you used ArcGIS before and you try to generate a DTM or a DSM with ArcGIS from LiDAR, I can only tell you, don't do that. <laughs> Use another software that's meant to work with LiDAR, you know. Elastilt is one of them, and Blast to them is probably the software that, uh, I mean, nobody has this kind of technology. It uses a streaming tin technology, that's what I did my PhD on. Uh, so nobody should be having that since uh, I'm the only one who who I think has implemented it. Um, but for smaller points, that's up to 20 million points. Last to them works just fine. So now we're browsing, and there should be a second file now. This is the one. It has a G at the end. And uh, just by double-clicking, you can add it. And the first thing I want to do just having a look. Did we really ground classify it? And yes, suddenly there are brown points. And here are the ground points. We take an intersect. A profile view like this. And if I look at G, that's my ground surface. And here my my. So yeah, that looks good. So now we can create a DTM from that. So we classified the points. For a DTM, it's important to use only the ground points. There are still all points in the file. So now I need to apply a filter. And the filter will keep only the ground points. So I say keep classification. And now there's one thing you need to learn when you work with LAS files. And that is that you stand with two feet on the ground. And that's why the classification code was decided on to be two. At least that's my theory. Um, it's a good way of remembering it. Uh, I mean, most people just know it uh, because uh, it's, it's just, but that's a easy, how we say in German, a donkey bridge. Um, to help you remember it. Unless, you, of course, you're a dog, because then it could be either four or three, right? <laughs> Depending on what you're doing. Um, OK, it's important to say add, so it shows up here. And double-clicking removes the filter again. So keep classification, two, add, and it shows up here. These filters will be added. They will be added in the order they appear here. Some filters, if you add multiple filters, uh, are order sensitive. Okay, now I go over here and I say, what do I want? I want a step size of half a meter. So that gives me rasters of half a meter size. I want to kill all really long triangles that are bigger than 100 meters. That's the default. That's mostly the, the, tr the things that span lakes where you don't have points or along the edges uh, so you don't get too long triangles. 
Usually I would ask for the actual values and I create the actual DTM where for every raster cell you have a value that says, uh, you know, 75.73 meters elevation, but I can't show you that very nicely <laughs> without opening another package, so I create a hillside shading from the DTM. That's only for human consumption. Um, and then I need to choose a format, PNG, that is good for producing, uh, for uh, storing images that have colors. Um, okay, that looks good. Uh, maybe the output, I want to create an appendix, I call it underscore DTM. Okay, and now something happens that often happens. Where's my run button? Where's my run button? This happens because I have this one open here, so I need to close it, and then the run button is back. Um, the menu shifts, moves up and down uh, as you open these roll down menu. So again I, I I sanity check my command line. Last to them I take as input this one with the G that was ground classified. I keep only the ground points. I create a half meter hill shade. I add DTM to the output. And now just because it's so much fun I show you one little way a reason why to add the command line for example. You see how it says underscore G, uh, G at the end. I don't like that. Um, so now I can say minus O cut one. That's, a, that's another um, command just like O dix. It will cut the last character from the input file name. So now I will get tile small DTM underscore DTM as output. This just as an example that I can change the command line right here if I know a command that's not in the menu and the menu doesn't cover all the commands. I say start. And uh, so it basically, oh is it done? Yeah, looks like it's done already. So now we created the DTM because that was so much fun. Let's also create the DSM. Um, for this, we get rid of this filter and add instead the first only filter. And now I could go and change a lot more things, but I know I can also edit the command line. So all I say is run. And now I need to go in here and change one more thing. Now we compute a DSM, so I should change that. I didn't do that in the menu because it's much faster to change it here. And again, I say minus O cut one to cut the last character here. Alternatively, I just remember, I could also use the other file because I don't need ground classification to create a DSM. A DSM you can just create from the first returns and they're already in the first file. So instead of saying O cut, I just use this file and this doesn't have the G at the end. And now let's see what we get. Because I didn't specify an output folder, all the output automatically goes into the input folder. Uh, into the folder, yeah, where the file was. So you see we have two uh, files we generated. Here's the DSM. And in the same folder is the DTM. So DSM, DTM, DSM, DTM. Nice, right? So we stripped away all of the forest so that we can see the floor of the whatever is hiding under the forest. Uh, when, you have, when you have georeferencing information, it automatically produces a KML file. So you can then just double click it. And if you have Google Earth installed, it will take you to wherever this tile is assuming the referencing information is correct. 
in this case where are we gonna go where are we gonna go here we are so now you can see uh, the DTM we just generated in geospatial context and Usually I hear people say, hey, what's that? Nobody? Hey, what's that in my DTM? The fish ponds or something in the middle of the forest? So uh, we are, if you noticed, uh, we are in Poland. And, uh, and uh, in Poland, uh, you find lots of interesting things in the forest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Was that funny? <laughs> uh, as you know, I'm German in, uh, in uh, a, f a few, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 years ago, uh, they, they tried to uh, uh, invade all the other countries in the world. Uh, that didn't work out too well. And uh, what you see here is uh, the more from uh, remnants of the moment when it didn't work out too well. That's it. the Russian tanks advancing on Germany, and that's their temporarily constructed uh, uh, fortifications that we accidentally found by processing this lighter tile, which I randomly picked from a huge fold of lighter tiles to uh, give a, a, an instructive talk how to create DTMs at a forestry meeting. And I was like, oh my God, what my software did here? All these bumps in the ground, i never seen it. That makes no sense. But we actually went there, and if you go to, uh, if you go to, if you go to rapidlaser.com and you type in here, you know, Russian tanks, um, then uh, then you will you will get the story behind it and the visuals. We went there, we took some pictures and so on. Um, so that's what that is, uh, a bit of modern day in archaeology. And that's why LIDAR is really cool, because you can find stuff like this. Uh, in, um, there's actually part two. When I, the, when I went back there, I knew I could do that, and then I, and then I happened to meet a German bunker, a, a bunker finder, like a guy who just goes around and tries to f locate old bunkers. And then I told him, hey, we have LIDAR data here. And then we got together, and uh, we found all these bunkers in the LIDAR before he even went there to find them. Uh, that, that's a follow-up story on the blog, so if you're interested. <coughs> okay, so I basically showed you now how to do a very simple LiDAR pipeline. Uh, we start with raw LiDAR and we create the product everybody wants. It's a, a DTM, a DSM, 